Are you getting close to age 60, thinking about Canadian pension plan, when to take it? You're still working, does it make sense to take the CPP or not? It's a big question and one that could drastically affect your retirement income when you hit retirement. Hi, my name's Adam, welcome to the channel. If you didn't join us in our last video, we covered off taking CPP at 60 and investing it versus deferring it till 70, and we'll link that video below. But now we wanna look at if we take CPP at 60 and invest it all the way till 70, you retire at 65 and start drawing down on your registered accounts, what makes the most sense? Taking your CPP at 60 and investing it or waiting all the way till 70. So we're gonna cover that and more in this video. Before we jump into the content today, I just wanna announce a really exciting announcement that we have is we're gonna launch a second channel. And so this channel is all about retirement, you know, CPP and taking OAS and RIF and Meltdown and all that kind of stuff. But this past Christmas, we ran a poll and we did a contest. We gave away two financial plans and we had over 650 people enter that. The last question we asked everyone as part of that entry was, what kind of topics do you wanna see us talk about more in 2023? And by far it was geared to, we wanna see more content for 20 to 45 year olds, like building wealth, buying the first home, the first home saving account. So what we've decided is we're going to launch a second channel that will focus more on that 18 to 45 year old market. People that are still accumulating and, and they have kids at home or they have the mortgage and they're kind of in that accumulation phase. This channel is more for the pre-retiree and the retiree, and we will continue to do that. So what you've seen on this channel, we will continue to do. The new channel will have a bit of the retirement focused stuff, but it's going to be geared for the younger generation. So that first video on that channel is gonna launch this coming Wednesday, March 8th. We're excited to have that out, and we're gonna to continue to put content out there. It will be myself, be Matt, uh, be Kyle, who's new to our firm here, and the rest of our team here. We're gonna be launching out new uh, videos every single week on that channel, so make sure to check that out and to subscribe to that channel. And again, thank you for all of our viewers. We do appreciate it, um, and we hope you enjoy the new content. And again, if you're retired and the new channel is not for you, I guarantee you there's someone in your life that could grab some value from the content we're gonna be throwing out on that channel. We're jumping back into Dave and Ruth YouTube. And again, these are a 60 year old couple. We have them working all the way till 65. We have an employment for both of them. We've kept this level across the board. $60,000 for the next five years for both Dave and Ruth. We have no RSP or TFSA savings, generally speaking. But in this case scenario, we have them taking their CPP at 60. We put their CPP at 75% of max. We have life expectancy to 90 and we have inflation at 3%. So what we've done is we've started their CPP at age 60, you can see here, but we've taken that same number and reinvested it back into their RRSP in this scenario. Because they're working, they're gonna want a bit of that tax break. They could also do a TFSA, which we learned in the last video, not a big difference between TFSA and RRSP, but because the client is still working, it's going to make more sense to do the RRSP. So we're gonna kind of build up the RRSP until they reach 65, and then continue to draw down that CPP and also utilize their RRSP, TFSA, and this CPP RRSP that they've done. So you'll see with Dave, we have that set in there, and we have the same thing for Ruth. So it's kind of the same stuff happening for both husband and wife in this scenario. And just as a reminder, we're not saving into their regular RRSP or their TFSA account. The only saving is this CPP RRSP that we've set up. Now, if we go into a combined view, again, for the next five years when they're working, We've left this the same, and you'll see this in the three examples that we go through today, but they're basically living off $100 or $100,000 in nominal dollar after tax in their pocket, which is basically the money they're bringing in from working minus the tax bill. When they hit retirement at age 65, this is what we want to look at. Like if they take CPP at 60, invest it till 65 when they retire, and then kind of open the floodgates, they have $93,589 to live off of. So that is their after tax income, a very good income, um, but that's kind of the base number. Now we want to compare that to 70. Like what if they didn't start their CPP at 60 and deferred it all the way till age 70? So jumping back into the software here, you'll see that I have their employment income coming in still. Their CPP now is delayed all the way till 70. So there's going to be a bigger benefit there. Again, 0.7% per month that they delay it past 70. And again, not touching RSP or TFSA, putting anything in or out of there for the next five years while they're working. So same thing on roof side. Now, if I go to a combined view, again, before we had 93,589 taking CPP at 60, if we defer it till 70, which is this scenario here, everything else is the same except we're delaying that CPP. And you can see the number jumps drastically. 
99,696. So a drastic jump if we defer that CPP. And again, this is based on investing that uh, CPP amount at a 6% rate of return. So my question is always, well, what rate of return would I need to get to get that up to about $99,000 of income. So let's take a look at that. So here's the same scenario, but again, I started the CPP at 60. Uh, I got income up to right around where we were, 99,470, so within a few hundred dollars. Now, if we jump into Dave, Ruth is the same thing here. I had to play with the rate of return. And you can see on the right-hand side here, look at the rate of return we need, not just on the five years that they're contributing, but beyond that till that account is emptied out. We need 14% rate of return every single year all the way down. It's substantial. So if you're wondering, okay, but I'll, I'll take my CPP at 60 and I'll get a better rate of return. Well, for an apples to apples comparison, you need a 14% rate of return. And that's both for Dave and for Ruth. So it's a substantial rate of return that you're going to require to compete with taking your CPP at 70. So if this scenario is your, if you're coming up to 60, you're planning to work a bit longer and you're not sure if you should take CPP or not, I encourage you to work through this process with your financial planner. Again, everyone's situation is different. I know I say that all the time. The job of, that I have on this channel, what I'm trying to get across to each one of you that watch these videos is that sometimes what you have in your head doesn't work out on paper. And I think a lot of us jump into, well, I could die at 63, so of course I'm gonna take it at 60. But statistically, that's probably not going to happen unless you have a health issue. For most of you, most of you, the financial data will prove that delaying CPP makes sense. Again, it makes no difference to me when you take CPP. My job is to help you get the most money possible, to educate you on this stuff, and just to help you maybe think outside the box a little bit. If you're worried about, well, I might die at 80 or 85, Adam, you know, 90 is a little too long for life expectancy. Well, in the next video we do in a few days from now, we're gonna cover that off. Looking at a similar situation to this, but with life expectancy at 80 or 85. So tune in for that.